Okay. Welcome everybody. Um, thanks very much for coming. It's great to see you all. My name is Nicola McMahon. I'm a member of the Georgian Society. Ailish Drake, our chair, is away, so I'm standing in for her today. And I'm here to introduce Rosie Webb, who is the Senior Architect in Economic Development in the Mexican City and County Council. Um, there's a new department called Urban Innovation, which Rosie is heading up. And she's here to present the Georgian Neighbourhood Revitalisation Programme. So I'll pass you over to Rosie. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, and thank you for the invitation to talk. So just, uh, so people who don't know me, I'm in Limerick for the last two and a half years, and I'm the senior architect working in economic development, which is an unusual thing to have an architect working in that area. And my brief it was really around trying to consolidate the historic city and town centers, so coming up with strategies for revitalization. So, um, so sort of two and a half years working at that, and this new department, which we have just set up as of you know, January, is now we're concentrating in the Georgian area of the city with a number of projects and strategies that have come to fruition. So I'm going to uh, um, just do a brief presentation for you on um, just an outline about what that strategy is and some of the opportunities that are coming. Because I really, we are setting this up as a collaboration project and we're looking for people to engage in it and even to get, you know, to get some advice from you guys about what you think we could do to kind of to ramp up this program. So I'll just introduce it now. So, um, so the Georgian Neighborhood Limerick Revitalization Program focuses on the renewal of the Georgian quarter of the city center. And this is one of the city center transformational projects that's identified in the Limerick 2030 Economic and Spatial Strategy. So right away we already have a good kind of uh, background in terms of policy for, for carrying out this project and it's in our uh, key projects and our key strategies. And what we're really trying to do is create the next prime location for living and working and to try to attract residents and really around activating building renewal and then also enabling sort of digital uh, and tech companies to locate in the area. So really, I suppose, our kind of stance is about activating other people. That's our real um, aim here, is trying to get others to do uh, as much as we're doing ourselves. Um, and so I suppose it's, it's worth starting out with this idea that we have a lot of challenges if we're going to achieve some of our um, goals, and not least of which is the compact development that's required for the national uh, planning framework. So essentially, most of the growth that uh, we're going to be allowed in Limerick is going to be concentrated in the city center and in the built up areas of, of the cities. So how do we do that when we have existing buildings already there? But secondly, our climate change goals, it's quite sobering to realize that we have 11 years to decarbonize in our, our, uh, our climate change goals. So we're trying to tackle some of those issues. And in the context of that, we have high levels of vacancy in the Georgian neighborhood. Um, a lack of diversity, uh, and a lack of quality housing. I'm trying to get a handle on, uh, you know, even things like energy ratings. And we have, uh, I, I don't think we have a single building that's over a C rating other than one or two of the, of the new buildings. So, um, so we really have to look at the quality of our building stock. We have a car dominant public realm and we have limited opportunities for digital and tech companies. But I suppose these challenges also provide new opportunities for urban revitalization, for making the energy transition, and for embracing the digital technology, or the, the digital economy. Um, and when I say that, I think in some ways, it, and people who do up old buildings will know this, sometimes you're better off getting a building that maybe needs more work than people who've invested a lot of work in maybe the wrong areas. So it, it also brings us um, a lots of opportunities. Um, and really around this, what we're trying to do is establish Ireland's first historic city lab for innovation and collaboration. Um, and I, I suppose I want to step back for a minute just to say that the program is a result of um, two and a half years of work in the Georgian neighborhood and activating underutilized properties. Um, and also in developing strategies and then and using those to apply for funding, uh, focused on bringing properties back into use. And this program, this revitalization program, is crystallizing the opportunities that are supported by the European Horizon 2020 funding, which we have received in November. 
uh, which is a fund uh, which has a value of 6.5 million to Limerick, uh, and in particular the, the Georgia neighborhood, um, to 2022. Um, but also uh, central government. So we uh, were successful in the Urban Regeneration and Development Fund bid with a, a strategy called Living Georgian City um, to uh, bring compact development, uh, to uh, encourage uh, compact development. So that is a multi-annual program. We've applied for the first year of it, which really supports some of the design work and enabling work. But over uh, the four years, that will be a 5.1 million euro uh, project. And really what we think is this is going to, these uh, programs of work are going to enable the neighborhood itself to fight back um, and to activate through, to, re to renew through activation. And so how will we do this? Um, our first uh, element of this is, is, is demonstration. We want to lead by example by developing a number of key projects which hopefully will catalyze others into action. Uh, secondly, we're activating, so we're assembling a land bank of buildings and sites for the private sector to invest. And we're also um, developing financial instruments to support that investment. And I suppose lastly but not least, we're creating a dedicated collaboration zone where we can bring new ideas and enthusiastic stakeholders to the table. So we're actively engaging with property owners, um, both through our derelicts uh, and vacant sites legislation, and by providing property supports for refurbishment. Um, we have to date 20 Living City Initiative applications. So the Living City Initiative is a tax incentive that's available for uh, uh, specific areas in the city. So we have 20 of those, but what we have found is that um, a lot of people have come in to talk to us in the advisory clinic. So we've had more than double that number of people who've come in to talk to us in the advisory clinic. Um, not everyone who comes in avails of the tax incentive. Sometimes that's also because the tax incentive uh, has very particular uh, characteristics, which maybe don't make, make it attractive to some people. Or also, you know, we, we give out grants as well. So for instance, if you take the grant, three times that amount comes off the tax incentive. So people would often rather just have the grant than the tax incentive. Um, so anyway, we're, we're set, we have these advisory services and we're finding that people are very interested in that because it sort of makes it a little bit easier to, to tackle some of the difficult problems when doing up old buildings. Okay, so the buildings activation, I suppose, really started before we set up this program with the work that's being done in Gardens International Project. Um, and then um, Innovate Limerick um, have uh, done up the engine as a, a digital collaboration center, and they're expanding that with uh, a virtual reality center as well. And then also some of the work that's being done in the O'Connell Street upgrade. Um, and we are progressing a program of work, building on those things to develop two new cooperative housing models, a smart aging homes project, which will be we intend to develop in this building. Um, we don't use the upper floors like a lot of people in the Georgian area. We are using the ground floor, but not the upper floors. So we want to lead by example by trying to bring those back into use. And then also a co-living scheme, um, which uh, we're, we are um, promoting in the former fire station on Thomas Street. And then as well as that, we're carrying out a public realm activation scheme in the laneways um, and developing an open innovation lab with our uh, third level partners. Um, and we aim to provide co-working space as part of that. So to encourage uh, collaboration by the private sector, we're developing new investment vehicles, and we're making people aware of financial assistance that's already available in the tax, you know, in the form of tax incentives and the grants. We're offering the refurbishment advice in our one-stop shop, but we're also trying to facilitate matchmaking between willing property owners and our development networks. And all the while, we are implementing a policy of statutory enforcement to disincentivize vacancy. Um, we will be enabling the installation of high-speed broadband and then providing a data marketplace in which people can capture the value of data contributions. And that's part of our Horizon 2020 project. <clears throat> so we are activating interest by nurturing a co-creation ecosystem. So this Horizon 2020 project, and it's probably worth stopping here for a minute because there's a lot going on in this. But basically what we're doing is we're establishing a regulatory sandbox which allows us to carry out controlled experimentation within, within this area. 
uh, together with our regulators in the energy area. And we that's part of the Horizon 2020 um, bid. So specifically what that means is we're, we're in, um, ESB and ESB Innovator are part of our consortium. And they will be working with one of our other partners, uh, a company called Smart Empower, to set up a community um, energy company and a smart energy grid. Um, and that will allow contribution back to the grid. So currently, um, although that's allowable in legislation, that hasn't been regulated for. So we will be a test zone in which we'll be able to do that here. But we want to expand that into other areas like mobility uh, and the built environment. So um, for instance, we have recently put out an innovation, um, a small business innovation research award together with Enterprise Ireland who sponsored that. Uh, looking for solutions to doing up um, historic buildings, particularly around issues have to do with fire and fire access and uh, you know, uh, making it compliant to fire um, codes. And so we ha are working with a couple of companies who are taking some of the products that they already have, tweaking those a bit to see are there ways that um, a digital system can actually enable the uh, easier or more cost-effective development of these buildings. So we're, t we're testing that out together with the building regulators, the uh, building control. Um, and then we, we want to expand that to other areas um, as well and to work with other digital entrepreneurs. So the digital collaboration tools that we, uh, we are, we've got through this project is um, digital 3D digital modeling, so we'll be creating a, a digital twin of the district which allows us to understand the built environment and how we use it, and specifically in this case, how people use energy when they use it, so that we can propose when they might want to trade with other people. Um, and it also um, allows us to do this um, scenario testing. So for instance, we could, through this digital model, our partners who are developing that model will be able to look at different scenarios. So if every, you know, if 25 people in here got solar panels installed, how much would that, uh, you know, how would that affect, you know, the energy uh, grid? And then also how much would that cost and what's the payback time? So we'll be able to have through that model that sort of scenario testing. We're establishing this community energy company um, and that will allow the uh, contribution back to the grid at a kind of a, a, a neighborhood level. So it, it won't necessarily allow individual contribution back to the grid, it will allow exchanging of energy between buildings and between buildings and vehicles. And then as a group of about 500 or 1,000 people, you'll be able to contribute back to the energy grid or even take energy off the grid to allow more renewables to come in. Um, and a part of these collaboration platforms are also um, enabling other people and working with our local champions and our community influencers to make to allow other people uh, to to follow. So we have this this um, urban innovation department, which we, uh, Nicola just introduced, is a new department that we've set up, um, which is dedicated to this program of work. Um, I, I'm leading that together with Mihai Balauka, who's our um, uh, pe people here might know Mihai. He works on our digital strategy. Um, and then we have Kieran Reeves and Deirdre McGrath, two planners, and we will be um, adding to that staff as we go with the project manager and the collaboration leader. But really a lot of what we're doing is coordinating work across departments within our own in-house expertise um, on development opportunities, um, procurement and, and project management, digital collaboration management, the targeted dereliction and vacancy uh, pro um, uh, program that I spoke about earlier, but also property acquisitions, and then um, we're really interested in the encouragement of new co uh, cooperative housing models and development strategies around that. Um, and then as well, we're working with our partners in our third le level academic institutions. So UL is uh, one of our partners in the uh, Horizon 2020 project, uh, but also public and semi-public uh, bodies. We're working very closely with the chamber who we are uh, getting deep retro advice for, and hopefully they will be one of our champions in terms of getting information out about how you actually can you know, uh, upgrade your property. Um, and then also with um, business and commerce and with civil societies. So this year we're concentrating on establishing the financial models and collaboration activities. And next year on improving infrastructure and shared public spaces, including digital services. 
And by the third year, uh, we hope that a number of the building projects and the capital projects will be coming to fruition. So our aim is to have additional people living in the area in dwelling units that are brought back into beneficial use by bringing properties out of vacancy. We want to see step-down accommodation for older people because we think there's a huge market for that and huge potential for, for reoccupying city centers in that um, model of living. Um, but also we want to make it attractive for families and young professionals and really to provide a 24-hour city. Uh, we want to improve the energy standards and building conservation standards. We're keen to introduce some universal design housing. Um, and we want to do this whilst maintaining affordability because that's one of our key assets in Limerick maintaining mixed use and by future proofing our public space through collaboration with our citizens um, so that in the end what we really want to do is to build on the assets we already have to reinforce a clean safe healthy and walkable neighborhood so i'm going to give you a little intro to our um one of our our videos and we'll be launching a number of these over the next few weeks um so really i suppose it's it's uh the initiative builds on the opportunities and growth which are currently already happening. So this is building on a kind of foundation that's already been set here. We have some funding and the projects are underway. We're engaging with the private sector and really what we're trying to do is create the environment for innovating to transform city centre living and working. Let me see if I can get this to work. questions or um, any suggestions, but there will also be another opportunity. So we're, um, the Living Cities Initiative, for people who don't know it, the tax incentive, it has another year to go, so we're holding a kind of an update meeting to kind of tell people, and particularly our development community, 
about what's going on and these kind of supports that we're doing. We're um, developing a, 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 video, a few number of videos that we'll be putting out, but also a brochure so that people can people who are working in the area can encourage that um, and can uh, easily access our one-stop shop. So we're holding that actually here in Narrative Core uh, next Wednesday, and you're all welcome to come to that uh, between 10.30 and 12.30, and we'll be um, presenting this program, but also presenting the city exchange projects in a little bit more detail and more information about the SBIR, and more importantly, an opportunity to get feedback, because we intend to ask for that Living City initiative to be extended, and also to look for some changes to it. And we're working with our partners in um, Dublin and in Galway and in Cork, and we would really like to get the information from people on the ground about how that might be changed, or any ideas you have about how to make that more attractive. Thank you. Thanks.